Yeah, that would be fun. Come on, take calls. Simon Cowell is back with me now. Simon, what do you make of the modern star? When you look at what's happening with Lindsay Lohan, with Charlie Sheen, with Christina Aguilera, there's a lot of stars going off the rails in various ways. Has it always been like that, or is there a kind of... Is new... it going to happen to us? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it may already be happening to us. We just haven't got caught. Um, exactly. But what, what do you make of it? Is it, the in is it the intense attention now from the internet, from TMZ, from... Has the game changed for celebrities? I was, I was talking to a friend of mine last year where we had this conversation where everything got a bit bleak last year, and there's still a bit of a carryover, um, where I, I asked him, do you know anybody who's successful and happy? And we actually, over the age of 50 or 60, we couldn't think of anyone. Um, I don't know what it is. There's a mood in the air right now, um, and uh, hopefully that's going to change soon, where everybody starts to take themselves a bit too seriously mm. is part of it. Didn't you get offered some huge six-figure sum by a guy in a restaurant in mm -hmm. L.A. once? Uh, yes, he offered me, I think it was 150 grand, to criticise him bonking his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the crazy part of the story is, I said no. Why wouldn't you do that? I don't just know. Easy I mean, look, money, isn't if it? you're watching, I'll even do it for 50,000 less. <laughs> okay? We'll do a deal. And was it going to be that night? I mean, you literally all just go from the restaurant back to the boudoir and. The you, what? You, the boudoir. <laughs> the bedroom. Yeah, and you'd be positioned on your throne, presumably, and you'd be. <sighs> Not my throne, darling. With, chair. Your red, with your red buzzer? Or? I, maybe I just the fact I didn't know them that well. I, I think the fact that he really was taking it quite seriously, and I knew I would laugh. Mm. Uh, I just don't know, this is too too crazy, but I genuinely regret it now. And the other offer that I thought you must regret by now was the, the huge commercial offer you had to do a major tie-up with a company. It's a brilliant story. My <laughs> agent, who you know, Alan Berg, is a really, really nice guy, and he called me up and he went, I've got some great news for you, Simon. What's that? You've been offered a million dollars for a commercial. How many days work a day? And I went, okay. He said, but there's some bad news. What's the bad news? It's Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to work out whether it was a compliment or an insult. Well, why have they targeted you? I mean, have they heard anything on the grapevine? Well, no, I'm putting a positive spin on it. Mm. Um, I kind of thought... Can there be one? I mean... Yes. This is... I am the guy every guy wants to be. <laughs> so if you take Viagra, <laughs> it's going to be as big as mine or something like that. <laughs> but um, I said no. Do you think you're a bit of a sex god? <laughs> Sex god boudoir. What is happening to you? you take the boy out of the tabloids, <laughs> over. A sex god. I just wonder, do you look in the mirror sometimes and think, whoa. Yes. Looking good today. Yeah. Did you do that today? I always do that. No, seriously. Mm. Um, <laughs> no, you, you know fully well, Piers, that um, the best form of Viagra is be on TV. Mm. Right? Suddenly you become more attractive. In fact, much more attractive. And girls will like you more. Do you care that it's shallow? I like it. <laughs> I do, I like it. It kind of, you know, makes it easier. You've never got married, but now we are on the verge of the romantic apocalypse, aren't we? You, you are now heading to the altar. Where are you getting <laughs> your language from I'm today? I'm on CNN now. I use, a, yeah, I use long appears. words. You, know, you, you and I knew each other as friends. Boudoir, sex gods. <laughs> Are you going to the royal wedding? I haven't been invited. No, nor have I. No. Why well, is that? I have no idea. Hmm? You think the amount of tourism we bring. I thought that as well. Mm. And we'd be fun guests. What do you think of William and Kate? Uh, I don't know William, but I've met Harry. Mm. Uh, and I've got to tell you, just top, top guy. Mm. Really, really funny, like a normal bloke. Um, great sense of humour. Uh, I really, really was impressed with I've him. met William a few times, and he's a, he's a real strong character. You think what they've been through, those boys? I mean, you and I remember Diana's yeah. funeral and watching these terrible scenes. And I think one of the reasons this royal wedding is getting so much attention and excitement is it's the first joyous royal occasion since Diana died. Yeah, that's a good point. And, it, and it's her boy. Yeah. Because yeah, I can't believe in America, they're going crazy for it, aren't they? Yeah, well, you think, I, mean, I can remember those awful shots of the two of them, you know, on, 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 on the funeral. Mm -hmm. And now you're quite right, now you're seeing him getting married. Uh, and he seems like a really, really nice guy. She's cute. Are you a monarchist? Yeah. Do you believe in the institution of monarchy, unelected? I, I, I do, uh, certainly for our country I do, because I think it, it's just something which, which makes us unique. You know, I mean, they are good people. They're not chopping heads off anymore or stuff like that. Um, 
their values are good. Um, they seem like very, very nice people, and it makes us different, special. When we come back, I'm going to ask you, you don't sing, you don't dance, you don't do impressions, you don't really do anything, do you? What is your talent? It's... <laughs> <laughs> Simon, this is the conundrum with you. You are the number one, well, arguably number one, possibly number two talent show judge in the world. <laughs> you're number one, right? You're the master of the art of judging people. And yet when you actually look at you and your own repertoire of talent, it is hard to put our finger precisely on where it lies. I mean, do you sing? No. Do you dance? Not well. Do you do impressions? Badly. Can you act? No. Can you do trapeze acts? Yes. Juggling? Managed that a few times. Fire eating? At times. <laughs> New Year's Eve. I know your point. If you were coming is, on America's Got Talent, yes. which is one of your shows, well, I wouldn't. what would you declare as your talent? If you had to. Well, I wouldn't. On pain of death, what would you say was your talent? I'm good at spotting somebody else. Apart talent. from that, what is the, what is the what tangible is talent? That, you don't need anything else. But you wouldn't get through the first round with that. Well, I wouldn't try. No, but if you had to. No, no, you're missing your own point, Piers. I'm no, not. No, you did. I know the point you're trying to make. You're saying you can only spot talent if you're talented. No, I'm not saying that. Yes, you are. I'm just saying you are involved in the talent show genre at a high level. Yes. If you had to produce your own talent, do you have a secret one we don't know about? Um, high diving. <laughs> 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 what is the X Factor? Well, we called it the X Factor because I thought good singer factor was a terrible name for a show mm. you know and I think nowadays um, I think somebody like Lady Gaga defines exactly what we're looking for because she is she's out there on her own right now she's incredible isn't she? well she's a she's super talented mm. very musical but she's um, she's interesting and she's worked it all out for herself mm. you never get the feeling somebody's controlling her she decided one day I'm just going to put a lobster on my head, mm. and, and people will like it. Um, I like the fact that she's different. I'm not gonna, she's not the best-looking person in the world. She's not the best singer in the world, but she is a total, utter star. And that is an example of what the X Factor is. I'm not looking for good-looking singer only. Mm. You know, you want somebody who's different. When you see Justin Bieber, when I met him for the first time the other night... He's, he's cool, right? He's about this high. Yeah. He's 16. And with a swagger. Uh, had a real swagger. Yeah. Very polite boy. Stood up, said hello, sir. Introduced me to his girlfriend and stuff. I was very impressed by his poise. But then I watched his movie. And fascinating. I mean, this boy gets, gets it. modern culture. Yeah. Uh, in a way that I don't think a guy of twice his age would ever understand. Totally. No, no. I, funny enough, I actually want kids who come on our show to educate me, not the other way around. I don't want to tell a 15 or 14 year old what they should be doing I want them to tell me and that's what I got when I met Justin Bieber for the first what time. What do you make of him? I think he's that, I think he's really talented, really musical, I think he's super smart, I think he's worked it out at a very young age, he's got a brilliant person looking after him uh, in terms of management, his, his record executive LA Reid, one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. um, they're a great team and I also like the fact on this show you could find a 50, 60-year-old singer mm. who, for whatever reason, lost his or her chance um, and wants another crack at the big time. I mean, you and I have experienced it with Susan Boyle. Well, we, I was going to say, we had that extraordinary moment. In fact, we can play a quick clip from that now of, of Susan Boyle. We have Boyle. this part. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. moment that moment was quite extraordinary and, I, and the reason well, I, I knew it the second of she course came on, you did. <laughs> I had a feeling you didn't know good. it Simon because you turned to me and you were laughing and I was laughing as well I and know. we both thought this was a preposterous moment where this little old lady from or middle-aged lady from Scotland was just going to come on and be a complete train break didn't we I know and we were humbled 16 million records later wasn't it amazing yeah no, no genuinely I mean this idea that you've got to look uh, 
a certain look, mm. that you've got to be a certain age, is ridiculous. The mu music business today spans, you've got Willow Smith at 12, mm. you've got Susan Boyle at 46, you've got groups in the middle selling millions and millions of records, and this show has to reflect that. It has to look, it has to be like the music business essentially is, there are no rules. You can't put boundaries around it. You can't say, if you're over 28, you can't have a hit. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Has Susan Boyle changed the rules of the music industry, almost single-handedly? Well, no record company you know would have signed her if she'd have, you know, tr she wouldn't have got an appointment. You know, it would have been somebody who keeps submitting tapes, you know, in the mail, and you, she would never have got a deal. What do you say to people? I mean, the other, the other, the other day, the top 100 albums in America, number one, Susan Boyle, with her second album. Number two, Jackie Ivanka, 10-year-old girl from America's Got Talent. Yeah. Certain people out there, and you, you know, you've seen the criticism, will say that you have single-handedly destroyed the music industry. Absolute rubbish. Rubbish. I mean, it has no effect at all. Look, it doesn't matter whether you've got a top 100 or a top 200. You know, what you want is people back into stores buying music. I mean, how can that be a bad thing? Elton John gave you a bit of a whack the other day. What did he say? He said a similar kind of thing, saying that it was very hard for anything outside of mainstream music to get a hit record now. Well, look, this is somebody who charges, what, a million dollars a private gig? Two million dollars? You know, I don't know whether he's concerned about himself. Maybe it is. But, I, it, but it, they always bleat on that we're not giving other people a chance. And I always want to say to them, I'll tell you what, you've just made a million dollars of your last private gig. Go and give it to a bunch of young musicians you care about. Put them in the studio. Go and nurture them. Go and spend some time looking after them. Then I'll buy your argument. They're, all, they're only worried about themselves. Does any part of you, if you're being very soft, I'm not critical. bitter about this at all. Of course. <laughs> Clearly hit a nerve. Why do they say bad things about me? <laughs> We're going to come back after another short break, and I'm going to ask you more secrets, including who are the judges going to be on X Factor? Well, I'm going to tell you exclusively. Good. Man. Nah. <laughs>